around behind us. Behind us. Coming around behind us. Hey, how you doing? Now, if you were paying attention to that last clip, there's probably a couple things that you noticed that were slightly off. Number one, those birds came in really low, just a few feet off the deck when they were coming in. And number two, they were coming in from behind us. They dropped into the pocket, coming kind of over the blinds and dropping in. Now, there's a reason for that, and that's because the terrain and the wind weren't cooperating with the way we needed to set up in that area. And that's exactly what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk about when Mother Nature, who loves to throw a monkey wrench in everything we do, how you deal with either the terrain or the wind or both being off on the day you need to set up. Now on a perfect day, in a perfect scenario, with the wind at your back, those birds drop right in in front of you. You've got, you know, two thirds of your spread out behind you and going out to the sides and you got good landing zones in front. You know, the whole scenario where those birds set into the wind and they got their wings out and everything's perfect. Well, we all know that that doesn't happen every day. And accommodating for the land and the wind is often a situation that we're confronted with. And that's exactly what we needed to do in that clip that you just saw. We could not have the wind at our back there because the hill dropped off so much that decoys would have fallen over. We probably would have fallen back in our blinds. Uh, it, it was just not conducive to set up that way. So what we needed to do was utilize more decoy power and giving them the space to land, forcing them into a area to kind of control their landing pattern. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we did that. Now, if you look in this diagram here, this is your classic scenario of how a spread should be set up. Obviously it's basic, but you've got the majority of the birds around you and behind you with your landing zones out in front. Now, going to this second diagram, this is how we had to deal with those birds with the wind coming basically in our face. Uh, it is slightly quartering so we can control a little bit, uh, but what we needed to do was have those birds drop around us, come in quartering, you know, 45 degree angle to our back, probably about a, I'm guessing about a seven o'clock direction and coming across in front of us to drop into the hole. Now, how we do that is a little different. Number one, you need to take into consideration is the cover for your blinds. You need to be hidden, okay? Uh, you absolutely have to have good cover. And what we like to do in these scenarios is spread our blinds out even a little bit more. Uh, the further you can spread them out, the less choppy that ground, the less bumpy it looks, the less obvious that there's something unnatural there. So get those blinds covered because the majority of your decoys are not going to be around you. Now, when I say decoys aren't going to be around you, you are going to have some decoys set up on your side and to be able to cover up the blinds a little bit. But the majority of your birds are actually going to be beyond you and out in front of you. You're actually going to create an exaggerated, almost backwards J-hook. Uh, it's going to be extremely powerful instead of on your side. It's going to be extremely strong on the other side and at the end. Reason being is what you want the birds to do is come across in front of you and drop into those birds that are out in front. Now, the shooting's not going to be optimal. You're not going to have those face-on shots right out in front, but what you can do is have some great cross shooting. You're going to have birds that are crossing around in front, which is actually a really good thing when it comes to you got multiple shooters. You wait till some of those birds have already crossed the first couple guys, so the end shooters have their opportunity to shoot, and you get good shooting as that block comes through. Now, 
the strength of this flock that you're putting out, the strength of the spread should be at the far end. If you look at this diagram, you're going to see the majority of the birds are kind of 45 degrees out in front of the, the blinds. They're going to be down the far end and out in front. This is going to be where those birds are going to be concentrating on landing. The more birds that are in that area, the more it looks like that that's where the feed is. So when the birds approach, they're going to come across in front of you, drop in towards the far end, and that's when you get your shooting. Now check out this clip with this scenario in action. Not only was the first clip, but this one is too. With this piece that you're going to see here, there's actually a hill in front of us. We were able to set up at the base of it. We couldn't back off any further from this hillside. We were kind of squished up at the bottom of it. So we set up some decoys at the bottom and the rest of the birds kind of just stretched up the hill and kind of looked like they were meandering and feeding their way up the hill. And that's what we did. We got these birds to fly down, come off of this hill, circle around, and sure enough, came right over the top of the blinds for some awesome shooting. Check it out. Now, as you noticed in that last clip, it was very similar to the first one you saw. Both situations, those birds kind of came around the side and dropped over that pocket. Now, the first one, obviously, the birds were a lot lower because we were on the top of a hill. The second one, they're a little bit higher because we were actually at the bottom of a hill. So, two different scenarios, same setup with the wind in our face or quartering at us and put that spread into action to where those birds are dragged across in front of us and it gives you some good shooting. Good luck to you. Hopefully this helps you next time you're out in the field. And Best of luck, hunt hard, and hunt safe.